this is Kelly from Crafty Kelly's at www.craftykelly.co.uk. Uh, today I'm bringing you a, another box frame gift idea. So I'm making a box frame um, piece for my mother-in-law and my partner. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer photos onto wood. Um, and then I'm going to use these puzzle pieces in my box frame and decorate it. So these box frames are just from Hobbycraft. They were four pounds each, so they were a good buy. They seem to always be on a half price sale. We're gonna use Mod Pods to do the transfer. Um, and you may have seen me use these wooden puzzle pieces once before, I, where I actually stamped onto them. So now we're just gonna use them for a slightly different project. So we're gonna need those in a second. Now this can work on any kind of shaped um, wooden piece you've got. If you've just got a bit of wood, I picked up this one for a pound in the works. Um, it would work just as well on here, but I'm not using that one today. Just a few things to note. This is actually just printed onto copier paper. Now you need to make sure that your photo has a high resolution. Um, and if you have writing on your photo, you need to flip the photo um, because when you put it down, it will be the reverse will be showing. So I went to my local copier shop because you have to use a laser printer. It's, it has to be a heated ink instead of a, like a water-based ink. Um, these were the ones that I printed out on my first go. And when I printed them, um, I'd forgotten that I needed to reverse them and they couldn't do that at the shop for me. Um, but also I wasn't happy with the color. So I kind of, I came home and used my Mac and lightened them, lightened these two, which you can see the colors much better um, because I've got writing in this one. And also this is where we live. So I want it the right way because Bob will know. Um, that's what we're gonna do. So this is just on copy of paper. You need to use a, a laser printer. Um, and do obviously be mindful of your, your colour because these were like far too dark. Um, I'm making these box frames for gifts. One for Bob for Father's Day. I know, I know this video is coming out after Father's Day but um, I thought I'd share the process with you anyway. Um, and this one is for, another one is for Bob's mum. She quite kindly asked me to make her a piece of my work. Um, she's just moving into a new... Um, property and yeah it was quite nice she asked me to create something for her for her birthday so that's what we're doing today so I'm gonna do I'm gonna overlay these photos onto my wooden pieces now this whole process is very simple to start with so first of all I've just trimmed down the picture and I know it doesn't meet the whole way but that's fine because what we're going to do is any ed edges we're going to distress with ink after we've done the photo transfer. So first of all, I'm just going to kind of get a good um, feel for where I want the photo to kind of sit. So about there. I don't really want his face. That's good. His face won't be on the corner. Now I have mentioned in the past that sometimes these actual wooden um, puzzle pieces are, are not always like flush and pristine. So I'm going to have this part where on a piece that doesn't really matter so much. So I don't really want it to be on to Theo or to Bob. So that should be okay yeah so I'm just going to trim this end off now I'm leaving that lip there because that's kind of like a guide for me and then I'm going to do the same on the other side I kind of fold it up create my lip and then just cut it down We don't want too much pavement. Now, the way this works is it does get a little bit messy, but that is absolutely fine. 
So I'm using Mod Podge. Um, you can get lots of different types. This is just the matte. Um, I do have the gloss, so I might go over it once I've finished it in gloss. So all I'm doing is I'm putting a covering over the picture. quickly and then I'm just literally going to cover the wooden puzzle piece don't worry about the puzzle pieces sticking together um, you can get a craft knife and just run it along the edge to release them after you've finished Good rub to make sure that it adheres properly. I hope I've just put it down the right way. We will find out in a minute. <sighs> I've given it a good rub down. If you've got a like a, a roller to smooth out, that's, that's quite useful to have. Now, this needs to sit for 24 hours before we do the next set or step. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna film again tomorrow once um, this is set. Okay, I'll do this one in the meantime and um, for you it will be straight away, but for me it's 24 hours. So see you again soon. It's been um, about 24 hours or so. Um, I done these yesterday um, and we're going to now remove the paper. Um, I've seen several ways of doing this. Um, the easiest way I find is so using either a sponge and a cloth when you have to saturate the back of the paper. Um, I use a sponge. I've got some paper towels just in case I need to mop up any mess. Well, once we've saturated the paper, it will lift off very easily. Here, so I'm just going to clean up as I go. There we go. I'm just going to let that one sit for a minute. And then um, let's do the other one. Let's pop a paper towel under that as well. Just make sure you're still in shot. Yeah. Let that sit for a moment over here and I shall bring in this one. So um, I have seen some people using cloths to kind of rub away, but I'll be honest, I find my finger um, is a bit more delicate so I can, I can really control how much pressure I'm putting down. But basically, all you have to do is work away your way around the image, just um, removing the, the paper mulch. But don't go too hard like I just did there, because it will lift off some of the paint.
Okay, so now I have gotten most of the back paper off. I'm quite happy with that. I've got this lovely kind of distressed look um, um, where obviously it does lift some. I think next time I will add extra Mod Podge um, and not be too sparing because I think that will have an effect on it. Possibly, I could be wrong. Let's lift it up and out of the way. So now, um, to seal it, I'm just going to go over it with a coat of Mod Podge and I'm going to let it sit for another day. Um, I'm using the matte, but you can use a gloss if you want that kind of shiny finish. Um, beauty of Mod Podge is it does dry clear. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover both of my puzzles. Now I've leave, left these two pieces out because in the actual piece of art I kind of want them apart so I don't want to kind of stick them together with the actual Mod Podge glue. So, uh, so now I've given both a good covering I am going to leave those to one side for the moment and I shall bring back in our box frames because I'm going to figure out, try and figure out what else or how else I'm going to decorate them. I'm just going to pop these here. Out the way. Cut the tea. Okay, so I've got both of my box frames. One I haven't bothered to take out of the cellophane just yet. Um, just because I'm, I don't need to yet. I'm just gonna wipe my surface. Little bits of paper everywhere. It is a bit of a messy um, process, but I think it will pay off in the end. So I've already cut some cardstock. Now these frames, uh, I think they were twenty one point eight. Um, to get a full coverage um, uh, and to be honest I didn't want to use two pieces of 12 by 12 just just for this so I have cut these short so they are the A4 cardstock and I've just taken off a section so this is 21 by 21.8 centimeters because I don't think it will notice once I've got this in place, as long as I have the the longest edge touching the bottom so it doesn't slip down, I think we can get away with with that. Just about. I think that'll be fine. So, what we're going to do, I'm not sure to yet. I don't know if I'm going to do some stamping or... Gonna do. I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm just using this as my guide so I've got a bit of an idea of why we're working to. I've got a pencil. Yeah, I'm just going to make a little dot and a line and I can always rub this out. Now, I know I want my puzzle in here. And I want maybe the puzzle pieces like that. I was thinking I've got lots of these um, little puzzle pieces, not puzzle, um, wooden scrabble pieces. And I was thinking of putting. Daddy and Theo. Okay, so for this next bit, I've just pulled out some um, pattern paper or DSP that I think might look nice within like what I'm doing. I've also got some of these really nice kind of wooden words, which are quite cool, um, that I might use. I've got some butterflies left over from another project, um, so I might pop those on. 
Um, nothing's set in stone at the moment. I, I did change um, this one saying Daddy and Me instead of Daddy and Theo. I just thought I'd add that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of distress some of the edges with some ink. See how that works? So I'm just going to grab some sponge daubers. got a set which I really need to label because I have no idea what's what and I've got some other my spares so I shall pick out I know that's a grey one so I'm gonna use some of the smoky slate um, from Stampin' Up ink and it might not take um as well as I'd like it to because I went over with Mod Podge. Note to self next time, do the mod do the, the inking and distressing first, then cover with Mod Podge. I was just in a rush to get things done. It might be alright, it doesn't seem to be coming off too easy. So I'm just gonna go around the whole thing with the grey and then I'm gonna come in with a brown. bride the pink um, it's like a dusty pink maybe sweet sugar plum um, okay, I've got blushing bride um, some of the colors that I've got from Stampin' Up! have retired but I'm holding on to them for the moment and we'll continue to use them um, because I don't see the point in getting rid of them just yet because if they're a colour I like yeah that's making it a bit warmer try this sweet thing. colour to it. So this is a sweet sugar plum. I won't do the same colours for Bob's one because uh, I don't think it really goes. in the same colour as the ink so this is the sweet sugar plum so I'm just using my sponge dauber and in the tray of my ink just daubing it down um, it will take a little while to dry there we go so we just add colour to that wooden piece. Very nice. I think I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on the edges. I'm not sure what textures yet. Let's have a look what I've got in my stash. So yeah, I think I'm going to use touches of texture. Um, and I think I'm going to go for this stamp here. I love this set, it's 
been so kind of versatile and useful, I found. Um, I really do enjoy using it. So I'm going to use the crumb cake. And I'm just going to try and put some texture just on that corner. I don't know if that's quite the right colour, maybe the grey. Because it's drawn onto Mod Podge, it will take a little bit longer to actually settle down. I might get out one of my little butterflies, or should I get a flower? I think butterfly. It's funny how there are some sets you will never get rid of. Even if Stampin' Up! have. <laughs> I'm going to try and make that up really good. Oh, it's not come through as clear as I would like, but that's okay. I can deal with that. I'm happy with that. Possibly could have done it in a darker grey. But they're not the main feature of this, they're just kind of background. Background swishes. don't know if I should do these in a different colour. I'll put that one there. I like the one up in the corner. That was where the butterfly was going to go. Mm, maybe there. So, I think this is how it's going to go. works best. Fab. So let's start sticking this down. I am going to bring back in the box frame. I'm going to pop the glass out of the way for a moment so I don't get it kind of anywhere or in the way. I always tend to, oh, not always, but I tend to keep this bit of paper in because it's a really good guide for me. I'm hoping my, my fast fuse is not playing up. But we're going to start with... Oh, let's move some stuff out of the way. I've got too much stuff on my desk. Right, so... Now I've cleared some space, I'm going to use um, the, the piece of paper that was actually in there, the actual box frame, because that is the right size and it will be easy to mount things onto. But I am going to use my Thick Whisper White. I'm literally just going to stick a bit of fast fuse on there. 
and that's just to make sure that it's nice and strong and rigid. My fast piece is playing out, so I'm going to use double sided tape. So I'm going to position this so that's a little bit either side. There we go. And then we're going to bring in our patterned, pretty patterned paper. I think it all came up then. Fab. So now, with our puzzle pieces, I'm going to use the foam tape. You can use dimensionals or you can use any kind of um, like foam pads. But I'm just going to pop one each on here. And on the puzzle piece that isn't uh, oh, going to be fully attached. I'm going to put like two levels to just make it that a little bit higher. Right, let's bring this in so. then without the glass pop it in that way so just because I don't I want it to line up properly I'm gonna pop these bits in upside down so then we've got our true kind of where it's gonna be One bit just out. Then, not sure what I should use to stick this on. Hmm. The foam pad isn't thin enough. Glue dots. They might be seen. Okay, so I'm going to use a bit of Tombow um, because it will have a bit of time to dry. So I shan't fiddle around with it. So I'm just gonna, but I don't want too much to overspill. But I think it might a little. At least Tombow dries clear. If I do have any trouble.
so I'm not going to fiddle with that or touch it. Okay, so now we're going to add our letters. Um, with these, they already come with like a little foam dot. I need to try and... Oh, good plan first would be position, then unpeel. Because I know I'll get it in the wrong order. Or I already have Theo's name in the wrong order. our butterflies. I'm just going to use a glue dot for that. I think I'll put the glue dots down on here. Might use two. I kind of feel I need to just support that a little bit more. I'm just going to get a couple of strips, stick them together, and pop it in there. There we go. That's not going anywhere now. Fab. So let's turn this the right way. So I'm just putting bobs together and um, so I've already done my piece of white cardstock, my coloured DSP and um, with the words, because they're quite big and I want them to overhang, I've used some foam strip um, but I've used the Stampin' Up um, foam adhesive strips because they're a little bit thicker than any regular one that I've used. I'm going to use a little bit of Tombow as well just to make sure that it is fastened nice. So I've already taken the backs off and cut it down because it was quite fiddly. Um, so just bear that in mind but I wanted something just to hold the letters up because these aren't like particularly strong if I'm honest. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Sorry, my camera stopped then for a sec. So I've just popped these down, a bit of glue um, with the foam pads. I'm just going to position my letters, bring back in my trusty bit of cardstock. Um, and I want it to go up to that line. So 
I'll fast forward this bit for you. So there we go, there's Bob's ones done. So happy memories, lovely puzzle piece, Daddy and me. So I hope you've enjoyed doing these two box frame ideas um, with me today as gifts um, to loved ones or make them and sell them on stalls, up to you. So we've done some photo transfer onto wooden puzzles um, and created a lovely box frame memory for a loved one. Anyway, so this has been Kelly from Crafty Kelly's. If you like what I've done today, give us a thumbs up um, and um, let me know what you think because um, I can carry on making, um, coming up with new ideas for things like this because I really enjoy doing it. So this has been uh, Kelly from Crafty Kelly's at www.craftykelly.co.uk. Check out my website, subscribe to my blog, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll catch you again soon.